Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Matthew Hegum, and I am excited today to walk you through at least the first draft of a presentation that I'm working on um, called The Rich Artist. Um, the subtitle is A Lean Approach Towards Personal Finances, um, though I think it's both personal and business finances. Um, and really what I'm interested in here is looking at this opportunity to help creative professionals figure out how to break through um, some of their money problems. So, you know, my name again is Matthew Hagg. I'm the CEO of Sum Innovation. Um, we're an accounting consulting firm uh, based out of New York City with team members in Dallas, Denver, um, DC, and New York. New York is our headquarters. Uh, and really what we do is we help people to deal with both the people, product, and processes of their business, or rather their accounting, uh, the accounting side of their business to help them get through um, their next growth uh, stages. Now that's this is not a, a presentation on, on some innovation, so I'm going to sort of skip forward and say really what I'm hoping to do today um, is to help you to find as a creative professional your path towards your greatest potential. And so today's presentation, The Rich Artist, is intended for those um, who are struggling with the with taking their creative energy and turning that into wealth. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through a few of the things that I believe will be helpful uh, uh, in taking you down that path. Um, so, um, you know, I mentioned some innovation earlier, and again, I won't go into the details. Um, you know, you can look at our website for more info. But one of the things that's important about what we do um, is the process. And rather, when we look at who we're servicing, um, you know, we look at them in three parts. Um, first and most important, which is the people. We look at the people, right? Who's there to help? Um, now, as you'll learn today, um, the people side of that conversation starts with you um, and then expands outward from there. Um, but people really do matter first when it comes to numbers and particularly for the creative person. Um, then we look at the process, and this is where you start to deal with things like bookkeeping, um, uh, record keeping, as some people might call it, um, dealing Dealing with the different aspects of, of tracking transactions and income um, and some of the balance sheet items, etc. And again, we'll get into some of that stuff. Um, and then the product side, and the product side is actually my favorite side. Um, you know, I just got back from the QuickBooks Connect conference in San Jose, uh, and I've been to other te accounting technology conferences. I'm very passionate about leveraging technology in order to solve problems for uh, for businesses and for entrepreneurs. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that stuff too uh, as well but again the most important thing really is the people side of it and so um, when you're dealing with a business that is small um, or perhaps you would define yourself as a solopreneur um, you need to look at your own goals and your own mindset. Um, and so one of the biggest issues that we see, uh, at least that is uh, particularly in the work that I do with uh, or through Arts Lab, where we are working with creative or arts-based businesses, helping uh, creative professionals to break through um, their work as uh, as creators, but but more than that, as sustainable creators, as thriving creators, um, is this poverty mindset. Um, Really, what that means is, you know, there, and I, I, I've been in this boat before, and and it's it's really this boat of thinking to yourself that uh, you aren't worth something, or that there is limited resources, and in fact, it's the limited resources that you're competing against, and in competing against those things, you've therefore bought into um, a poverty mindset, which is um, the sense that there is not so much to go around um, and actually that's not true and, and I won't go into that too much except I will say one thing and that is that I'm very influenced yes um, by well I should say I'm very influenced by a lot of things but there are two two things today at least that have informed this presentation um, one of them is uh, actually a book uh, though I listened to it in the audio format uh, called the science of getting rich and I think this is something that a lot of people should look at but particularly artists um, because it's gonna if you if you believe what it's suggesting it's gonna shift your mindset uh, around value and worth and your relationship to others uh, and particularly relationship to charitable activities um, there's some interesting quotes in there um, that I won't get into the other one though um, uh, is of course my coach I believe in coaching it's really critical to help you grow this is somebody that I've worked with Michael Patrick Miller um, for the last six months and he's helping me to really break through um, some of the challenges that I've uh, faced personally so um, going back to the topic at hand though 
I think one of the things that I've come to discover um, in reading the in reading that last, uh, or rather listening to that last book, and then uh, connecting with Michael on the matter is that, you know, the truth is, is I've I've been broke for years, but I'm not a starving artist. And so the term broke is a funny term because it's relative. Um, and starving is also an interesting term because it's relative too. But the truth is, is that if you look at, um, uh, at least if I look at what I've been able to accomplish over the last few years, it's not what I used to be. And um, and I have to say what I used to be was far worse. And, and in fact, in what I used to be was actually a starving artist. I'm not starving anymore. Um, yes, there's a lot more that I can do. And so I, I, I like to sort of say, yes, I've, I've, I am perhaps still broke, but, <laughs> but, but there's so much more potential. Um, and uh, yeah, well, whatever, that's a personal thing. But anyways, the thing is that that's important here is this idea of limiting belief. And um, a lot of people have ideas or attitudes around what's possible versus what's not not possible um, that prevents them from actually being able to achieve something. And so what I want you to think of today um, is this, right? A lot, one of the things that I've heard many times before, and I even said it to myself, was this idea of that I am not good with money. Well, no, you're actually great with money. You just haven't been given, uh, you haven't given yourself the time to shine. You haven't asked yourself and others the right questions. And today, therefore, we're hoping, um, is the day that you're going to change all that, that you're actually going to exhibit um, a, a better sense of greatness in your behaviors and in your actions so that you can just do what you know you need to do. Um, and really, this is all about breaking through the property mindset. And again, I'll reference this, The Science of Getting Rich, and there are many other resources out there that can sort of help you to, including Michael, who can help you to break through this um, this challenge. Um, that being said, you know, again, when I when I think about numbers and finance and accounting, you know, you got to keep it simple, stupid, <laughs> like kiss, right? And really, the question you should be asking yourself over and over again is, how do I simplify this? How do I make it easier? The first thing you need to do is really you need to start with now. You can, you cannot, or shouldn't, in under some cases, obsess about the past, obsess about doing all of this stuff or having done all this stuff or pulling all this information or dealing with all this this data that you think is supposed to be in this system. Now the truth is when it comes to tax stuff and, and reporting, yeah, maybe that stuff is, is important. But um, if you're only going to choose to do one thing, that's, that's what I would suggest is start with now. Um, and the one thing to keep in mind is that you cannot improve that which you do not track. So when, you, when I say start with now, I, what I mean by that is Start to do, start to track now the things that you want to track, or at least be mindful of the things that you want to track. Um, and then mindfulness does count, by the way. I mean, I I, I won't go into why, but I, I do believe that um, paying just the act of paying attention can make the greatest difference. Um, and also, therefore, start with what's easy. Um, this is a Feldenkrais throwback for those of my those of you who are my Feldenkrais friends out there. Um, you know, you will hire somebody eventually. You'll hire that person to actually change your system, maybe, depending on your uh, level of competence or knowledge or expertise in accounting and accounting technology. Um, so, but you have to start somewhere, and you have to start simple. And so, start start somewhere simply, recognizing that one day you will also have to let that go. Um, so set, but re set it, but realize that eventually you'll have to let it go, and don't also solve a problem that you don't have. Now this is this is actually referencing the title um, for those of you who aren't aware or rather the subtitle a lean approach towards person towards finances. Um, one of the books that's uh, very much influenced me is the lean startup book um, and I, I personally believe that everybody uh, everybody that wants to make money and sustain themselves as a professional really should um, take a look at uh, oh, this guy's book here so it's uh, Eric is it Eric Reese or rice I believe one of the two um, anyways take uh, check out the lean startup.com uh, for more info on that um, all right so where were we uh, oh but one of the things about the lean startup methodology is that you you know you don't obsess or worry or create a ton of infrastructure um, for something that does, isn't happening now or isn't happening today um, because it's just it's a waste of time it's a waste of energy it's a waste of, waste of effort and so rather look at the problems that you have on your table now and try to solve those. Start there and then when you get to it, you'll get to the other ones um, that come. Um, and also, I think this is a big one, think like a CEO. Um, your goal is to work 
on your biz, not in your biz. You want to be able to treat your business like a client, um, which means that you need to be doing things with the intention to therefore at one point or another uh, step back and actually allow other people to do their jobs effectively. Um, and, and as the CEO, the number one job of a great CEO is to be clear about your vision. What are you actually trying to accomplish? Now, I think um, there's a lot of conversation I've had with people, creative professionals and business people, um, about mission, vision, values. Um, there's uh, Simon Sinek's Understanding Your Why. I mean, there's, a, I think, a plenty of resources out there um, to get you into this dialogue about what is your vision. But what I've actually come to, bo uh, come to appreciate is boiling it down to really three questions. Um, what is it that you want to have? What is it that you want to be? And what is it that you want to do, right? Just by creating that bucket list for yourself, I think you'll you'll find that you can have a sense um, of, of what it is you're actually trying to accomplish. And also acknowledge that what you put down on paper, you actually do deserve. Um, and you deserve all of it. And so, so therefore, now we're going to jump over to um, the number side of this and... Uh, <laughs> and and okay great so then you've got to that point where you've actually put it down on paper now 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 put numbers to it um, putting numbers to it is a whole other conversation um, that is the act of creating a budget um, but the important thing to note is that the goal here is to translate your vision into a budget that is meaningful for you um, so that you can begin to express your work through numbers um, okay so now that you've sort of done that legwork and trust me this legwork is not work that can be done overnight for most people. In fact, in some cases, it will take years for some people to get out of the poverty mindset. It'll take at least months for some people to understand how to simplify things for themselves. And it'll take at least a, at least a day, if not more, um, if not years, to truly understand what your vision actually is. Um, um, but it really, it really does begin with the one thing that we do suggest, which is starting now with that idea that A, you deserve it, and B, this is what you want to do, and so you're going to make it happen. So now that you've created um, a sense of what that is, and you've defined perhaps what your vision is and numbers, the next part of it is really the accounting part of it. And so I'm going to give you a walkthrough of some of these things, and, and my goal here um, at some point is to provide Excel resources for these, um, uh, but, but you can get these in other places. It doesn't have to come from you. The one thing that I think is valuable is really creating a balance sheet for yourself. And this is where you look at your assets. Those are things that you own. Um, the liabilities, which are the things that you owe to others, um, and the equity, which is a loaded term, and I won't get into it, but the idea here is, is really the things that you've um, put into that are neither perhaps an asset nor a liability. Um, now, I say that, and I have to, I guess I have to caveat by saying I am also, that's not a maybe an ideal definition from an accountant's perspective. Um, but the bottom line here is, is that at least from your perspective as an individual, um, what you're doing is you're breaking down um, all of the money that's in your bank accounts. You're breaking down um, all of the money that you owe to other people. Um, you're breaking down the money that you've given to other people with the hopes of some sort of a return. That would be the equity side of it. Um, and that really becomes your balance sheet. Um, now you can create more complex balance sheets. I mean, you can create one. Uh, you could create one, and again, we'll, we'll look at this maybe when we do an Excel example. Um, is one that is inclusive of just not just inclusive of yourself, but also inclusive of your family members. Because um, again, this is about you as the person. The business is a whole other animal, which we'll we'll touch upon a little later. Um, and then once you've created this balance sheet, now it's also time to create an income statement. And this income statement um, is really just money in and money out, right? Income or revenue um, is the money you generate um, based off of the goods or services that you provide, or your paycheck, if you will, um, versus your expenses, which is money, of course, that goes out. And there's a lot of expenses. There might be few, um, few sources of income. And really what this also then provides you um, with is with a sense of what your net income is, um, and, and ultimately whether or not you're making money or losing money uh, within a period of time. Um, the fifth step or the next step uh, after you've nailed down those first two um, financial 
well, their financial statements at the end of the day, but we're going to call them working documents, um, is to also create a cash flow document for you, for yourself. And this is where um, you track money in and money out relative to a bank balance and a shifting bank balance. Um, so you might start off at the top of the spreadsheet with zero dollars, um, which which we'll get to this next comment in a second. Um, and after making a hundred dollars and spending fifty, your bank balance is left with fifty. Right um, now, it is possible to be rich and have zero dollars in your bank account. That sounds weird to say, um, and I, it's not ideal, but it is possible, right? Um, and I'm just going to let you think about that for a moment, and we can dialogue on it later. Um, but once you've created this cash flow statement, then it becomes a matter of understanding, or rather, it also becomes a matter of understanding your revenue model. Um, this is really how you make money relative to the costs that are associated with the production of that revenue. Um, and so this is where this idea of cost of goods or cost of services comes into the picture. Um, and this is also a moment where a really good accounting system is going to come into play because you're going to want to eventually start to monitor those costs. And by the way, your time can be translated into a cost, um, though that brings up a bigger conversation about value-based pricing, which we won't get into. Um, but realize that, that it, 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 money doesn't come from nowhere. It takes time, it takes products, it takes people, it takes, uh, it takes action. Um, and uh, that can be quantified. And if you want to improve, remember what we said earlier, you cannot improve that which you do not track. You're going to eventually have to start tracking your cost of goods um, in order to actually improve those things. Um, yeah, and again, this is where a great accounting system comes into play, but don't worry about that just yet. Again, don't solve a problem you don't have just yet, and when it comes to a great accounting system, you'll probably hire somebody to set that up for you anyways, unless you're an accounting professional. Um, so let's move on to the next piece of the puzzle, um, which is strategizing with projections. Um, and I use those words specifically um, because I think it is a matter of strategy. It's a matter of saying, okay, well, you know, we understand where we're at, that's your balance sheet um, and your income statement, perhaps. We understand how much money we're making relative to what we're spending. Um, we understand how we make money and what those mechanisms are. We understand how the cash flow, the cash is actually moving through the business and whether or not things are tight or not tight. Um, and and so now it's a, a question of, well, how do, we, how do we look at different versions of the future to help us understand what is possible and, and what uh, you know what elements of our of our uh, strategy could actually change the game, um, and so this is where you start to shift your perspective or your mindset from record keeping to record casting. Um, whereas in record keeping purposes, you're so focused on just making sure you put everything in the right bucket. Um, in record casting, you're thinking, okay, well, how can I tra uh, create a trajectory for my business um, that would cast certain scenario or a certain set of opportunities for me um, uh, and and that's a that's a that's a whole other conversation I guess this is this is again a, a high overview I um, mean lastly um, though I think a lot of people will tell you to do deal with this stuff first and deal with the tax stuff first I think you know what you need to get a good system in place before you can actually have an effective conversation with a tax person so deal with the taxes after you've at least iterated through this process of creating a system uh, once or twice um, and so this is this tax game is where you start to look at personal versus business expenses um, we'll have some tools to help you with that later um, this is where the legal entity if you are actually set up as an entity does matter um, and also this is where um, at least on a transactional level, from a compliance perspective, issues like payroll and sales tax um, start to come into the conversation. Now, that being said, again, I think you always need to work with professionals, particularly with tax situations. And so if you're a sole proprietor and you um, need help with your taxes, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. I can I can hook you up with a few people. Um, that being said, you know, again, this was intended to be an overview. Um, this is a process, right? I think a lot of people think of accounting uh, in a traditional way. They think, oh, I have to do this. and Well, rather, they think about businesses in a traditional way. They think, oh, I've got to create this business plan and have all these things laid out on a calendar over time, and it's got to be done a certain way, and these are my milestones, and I've got to achieve them. Um, but actually, it can be a little bit more flexible than that. And so, um, so to be clear, it is a process. It's an iterative process. Again, please read The Lean Startup. Um, it starts with now. 
um, and with what's easy, um, and you just need to make a decision to act, to do. Um, and, 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 and on a minimum level, I would recommend that you do it on a monthly basis. Um, so you start off um, you know, by going through this process of addressing some of these key areas, and, and then you kind of summarize that into a budget versus actual that you actually look at on a monthly basis. Um, and each month, also go through the process of asking the question, how can I improve the people? So maybe it's looking at your behaviors that month and saying, well, where did I spend my money? Where was I not paying attention? What sort of behaviors or attitudes um, got in the way of me actually being successful and achieving my revenue goals or managing my expenses or, or, or forecasting intelligently? Then look at the process. How can I improve the process? Maybe it's, maybe it's because I'm, I'm recording things too late or I'm involving the wrong people at the wrong time. And, um, yeah, and and then lastly, the product piece of it, and the product piece, or well, the pro or process, or maybe maybe you're not even taking care of your compliance the right way, and that that's a whole other conversation. And then the product side of it, and that's where you say, well, how can I actually improve this process, and therefore my work with other people by leveraging products to um, increase the productivity of my activity, and so. Um, and so that's where we come down to the tools that make shit easier, right? So the first one that I think is really valuable, um, this is a task at, at minimum. This is a project at most. Um, so you need to keep track of the tasks associated with a project. So I love using a solution called Todoist, uh, which we'll open that up there. Todoist is an amazing uh, tool for organizing um, your stuff. Uh, I, you know, I love it. There's a great iPhone app for it as well. Um, Let's see, what is that? There's also Excel, Excel spreadsheets. You all know what those are. Google Sheets, more importantly, because again, when we talk about, for example, to like Zapier, uh, which is uh, an iPass system, which we'll talk about in a moment, um, it, the, having things in the cloud makes it possible to collaborate with other people more effectively, and I think that that's important. Um, and so really, and then the last thing is calendars to set reminders, emails, obviously, to communicate with people, um, and possibly even a tool like Slack if you're collaborating with others in the process of developing um, milestones or budgets or, or whatever it is you might be doing. Um, and really, those are the only things you actually need to kind of get this thing rolling is, is a little bit of a to-do list, some sort of a spreadsheet, um, and some sort of a calendar to keep track of important dates and deadlines. Um, that being said, there are other tools that I recommend. Um, Expensify is a great one. So one of the things that's very painful about this process of keeping track of things is um, the receipts. And so, uh, so Expensify, for example, uh, we'll open up their website, actually allows you to take pictures of the receipts and then, um, and then in some cases actually automatically record them into the accounting system based on how you've got it set up. Uh, so check out Expensify. That's a great tool. Um, the other one is HubDoc. HubDoc is a fascinating tool. Um, let me Google it. See, you can Google things too. Google is great. Uh, let's open up HubDoc here. Uh, yeah, we'll open up on the Zero App Store. Um, HubDoc actually is this really awesome tool where it goes out and logs into the different billing systems, or sorry, the different um, uh, things that you've got set up for yourself. So for example, you might have like a Sprint account and there's a bill associated with a Sprint account. So it'll go log into the Sprint um, account for you, pull the bill down. Um, again, if you've set it up to be integrated, it'll actually scan that and then move that data over into your accounting system. So it's actually improving uh, the record keeping process. Um, and then let's see what else we got for you. Um, oh, Zapier. And Zapier, I think, is fascinating because, again, I go back to this idea, well, you want to treat yourself like the CEO, right? You want to um, think about the scalability of what you're trying to do. Um, and so a tool like Zapier, um, which is an iPaaS integration platform as a service system, it actually helps you to create automation um, between two different tools that might, where automation might not otherwise exist. And in this case, for you, what we're doing today is, um, you know, we've talked about task management, we've talked about Google Spreadsheets. So one of the things you could do um, is you could record a transaction. Um, well, how would you do this? Let's say you could, you could record a transaction into this Excel spreadsheet and then use that event as a trigger to then do something to, to remind you um, to categorize that transaction in, a, in an expense management uh, spreadsheet or something like that. I don't know. I mean, you know, we'd have to look at uh, your, your individual use case. Um, 
And then lastly, uh, and man, this is really not relevant here, so I'm going to cross that out, uh, um, is your general ledger system. So when you are finally ready, and again, you've iterated through this process a couple of times, you might actually arrive to the point where you say, okay, now I, now, now I actually need to set up an accounting system to uh, manage my, my personal and uh, or business finances. And so mint.com, many of you know, um, I won't get into it here. Um, Zero is another one um, that that we like at Some Innovation. Um, Zero is a pretty a, actually it's a really great system, um, and it's an alternative to QuickBooks uh, online. Um, so you can check that out. Actually, if you go to the pricing options, let's just take a quick look over there for a moment. Um, something like the starter one will probably be simple. You might not really be sending out invoices. Um, you might only have but a, but a few bills and or a few bank uh, transactions. Um, now this is this is I guess pushing us more towards the business side of things. So actually what I might recommend um, if you're a sole proprietor, um, QuickBooks has this QuickBooks Self-Employed. Um, QuickBooks Self-Employed is a new product, at least from from my knowledge, um, uh, and it's it, they you know they actually demoed some stuff on a walking tour I was at uh, for QuickBooks Connect, and one of the really cool things is that it actually allows you um, for transactions that come in through the bank account to swipe one way if they're business and swipe another if they're um, personal, um, which is a problem because as you know, um, uh, you know monitoring your personal versus your business expenses is just a part of the process. Um, so anyway, so that's a, an overview of um, what we are talking about when we talk about the rich artist uh, and I hope that helps you to understand the uh, value of what we're bringing to the table here at Arts Lab and some innovation etc. All right, ciao.